OK, so we, we've covered weightlessness. In the International Space Station, it's actually very similar to what goes on here. Let me try and show that. Um, I think this will be useful for you. OK. All right, so okay, so now in the ISSS, in orbit, you basically have the situation where the space station is above the Earth. Here, this is our ISSS, okay? You have a person standing in it. The force of gravity on the person and on the spaceship are both mg, okay? So the spaceship is accelerating. You can put minus, with an acceleration equal to minus g. But it's traveling with a velocity v. OK? So this is, this is an identical to the elevator falling. It's if the cable snaps. It's the identical situation. Let me try, maybe another example will help, because I'm not sure if this is completely clear. Let me try something. Because I've said that it's orbiting, but I want to be clear what I mean by orbiting. So what is orbiting? OK. So orbit. So I don't know if you've heard of, um, I'll just, this was a quote. And it's, it's not exactly right, but it's a basic idea. Um, so Douglas Adams, he wrote, uh, this book's Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. I don't know if it's quite a while ago, but some of you may have read them. OK, good. And in one of them, he said, um, in order to fly, you need to throw yourself at the ground and miss. OK? So that's how you fly. You throw yourself at the ground and miss. OK? Well, that's kind of, I'm going to try to show you that's kind of true. Because flying is kind of, would be orbiting. Orbiting would be kind of flying around the Earth, OK? So I'm going to try to show you that's basically what he's saying is correct, that you need to throw yourself at the ground and miss. So let's see how you do that, OK? So let's imagine here you're on the Earth, OK? Here's the Earth, OK? And let's imagine you have a tower, OK, which is 100 miles high. OK? So you have this tower that's 100 miles high, OK? And you're on the top of the tower, OK? You climb up that tower, OK? I'm going to need to, I'm going to, need to move that writing over. So it's still 100 miles. So we have a 100 mile high tower. OK, good. And you're standing here, OK? Above the Earth, OK? So let's imagine you throw a ball. You throw a ball. Oops, a daisy. OK? You throw a ball horizontally, OK? What's going to happen? It's going to go like that, OK? And the acceleration of the ball, the vertical component, of the acceleration of the ball would be m, with the weight of the ball is mg, so it accelerates to the ground and it, with an acceleration of g. Okay? So you throw the ball and it hits the ground. Okay? So now let's throw it with a, throw it again with a faster velocity. So if you throw it with a faster velocity, 
I mean, I don't know. This idea, I did, I, did I bring one? Nope. OK. You throw it with a faster velocity. Could you imagine that it might do something like that? But you still have mg. OK? So if you throw it faster, it'll go further, and it'll land somewhere else on the Earth. Now let's imagine you throw it with an even faster velocity. At some point, you'll throw it, and it's going to miss the Earth. At some point, because of the curvature of the Earth, if you throw that ball with enough velocity, at some point, it's going to miss. But it still has an acceleration, or a weight of mg with an acceleration of g, or minus g. If you put the arrow on, you don't need to. Even at this point, the ball, it's, it has a velocity in this direction, but it has, it's falling in this direction with a equals g. And it would continue to do that. Does that? And that's basically what's happening. It, it, if you throw it hard enough, it's going to miss the Earth. All right? Even though it's, and then it will constantly fall to the Earth. So it's constantly falling to the Earth, but it's also constantly missing the Earth. So you have that kind of, I mean, the situation, I can, for me, it's if I throw a ball, you know, in the air, because I don't think this is a simple idea, okay? I thought I had one. If you throw something, it just falls to the ground with an with a acceleration of g. If you throw it hard enough, it's still going to have that acceleration. That doesn't change. The mg, or the gravity, just depends on the force between the ball and the Earth. And that's the same. That hasn't changed. So it's still accelerating, but it's basically constantly missing. And it's because of the, because basically we live on this big ball. Okay? So this is how you would go into orbit. So you could argue that you throw the ball horizontal, with enough horizontal velocity. If you throw it hard enough, you miss the Earth. So maybe this, this Douglas Adams is right. If you, the way to basically fly is to throw yourself at the ground horizontally with enough speed. So if you throw yourself hard enough, you miss the Earth and you go into orbit. Okay. Any questions about this? And this is basically what the International Space Station would be doing. So it's constantly falling to the Earth in the same way that the ball thrown from the top of the 100-mile uh, tower falls to the Earth, this is, it has exactly the same acceleration. But it's weird because it doesn't actually, it never hits the Earth. It just keeps on trying to. OK. Um, let me just put something up for that. So the, the ball keeps falling at A equals minus G. Okay. So the space station keeps falling at a equals minus g, if you like, with an acceleration of minus g. Okay. So I guess the question is that we're going to try and answer is how fast you need to throw it. How fast? Okay. So if you, you, you want to throw the ball fast enough so that it orbits the Earth. Okay. And we can use the math that we've done so far to figure out how fast that needs to be. Okay. So you have this idea of throwing the ball. You throw it hard enough and it'll miss. So there's, let's draw the ball again. Here's the Earth. Here's the ball. Now it's in orbit. Has a velocity v, a mass m. Okay. 
which means that it has a weight of mg. So the only force acting on this, so this is a ball in orbit, the only force acting on it is the force of gravity. Okay? So let's write F equals MA. If, the, if, we, if we're going to call this distance to the Earth, we're going to call that RE. Uh, let me, here's the Earth. Here's the distance. We're going to call that RE. So RE is the radius of the Earth. All right, so here's the Earth, the ball with a velocity v in orbit. So what is, what's the acceleration? What's the value of a for this thing in orbit, roughly? What is, that? What is the acceleration for something in orbit? Yes, and what's, but how big is it? m v squared over r is the right answer, but how big is the v squared over r, roughly? It's just about the same as g, because that's the acceleration. That's how the acceleration is basically how fast it falls to Earth. It's falling to Earth with that acceleration. So the acceleration is approximately, we can say, g. OK? Or we can say minus g if you want. But normally, for circular motion, we always have to the center of the circles being positive. So it's about. It's about 10 meters per second, let's say, squared. So F is equal to mg, which is equal to the weight. But because it's moving in a circle, what's the acceleration? You, you, you just said it, right? V squared over R. So because it's moving in a circle, we can say that A is equal to V squared divided by RE, OK? The radius, so, I mean, it's close to being the radius of the Earth, because it's only 100 miles above. So what I'm trying to say is the distance from the ball to the center of the Earth is almost the same as the radius of the Earth. So we can just put that in. So A is V squared over R, but this is also equal to G. Because that's how much it's accelerating. That's, its acceleration is 10 meters per second squared. That's the numerical value. But the type of acceleration is a centri you could call it maybe a centrifugal type of force. It's going in a circle. So then you, you have a simple uh, way of figuring out v. So you can say v squared equals re multiplied by g, which gives you v equals square root of re times by g. Okay. And if you put in some values, so the radius of the Earth is about I think, it's, I think we said it was 6,000 uh, kilometers. Uh, G is about 10 meters per second squared, the size of G. So if you put those numbers into here and here, you end up with V equals square root of REG, which is about 8 kilometers per second, or 18,000 miles per hour. So if, you, if, if I could throw this ball, the reason you have to be high up is because you don't want any air resistance to slow it down. But if I can throw this ball at 18,000 miles per hour, then it will orbit the Earth. And it won't come down again. It'll just keep on going. The reason it needs to be 18,000 miles per hour is because it needs enough V to produce that amount of G with that radius. So you need to have enough, basically, uh, velocity such that the acceleration is about is, is going to cancel out the weight. Okay. <laughs>